Let's go ahead and dive right in here with a solution that it contains two applications. Both of these are command prompt applications, one to register uh, a peer name and one to resolve a peer name. In both of these projects, I have already added a reference to the system.net assembly. And to get started, we're going to go ahead and add the system.net.peer-to-peer namespace. And then one of the interesting things that we may want to do in an application is be aware of what clouds are available. So there is a cloud class and off of that class are some static methods and properties that we can use to interrogate what clouds are available. So we're going to use the get available clouds method which returns a collection of cloud objects. But if I was interested in just a particular cloud, I could grab the global cloud property which would return a cloud instance that represents the global cloud. What's interesting is we also have a reference, a static reference, to the available clouds. And this represents all of the available clouds, even though what I get back is a single cloud object. It actually represents all of the available clouds. Same thing for all link local. It's a single cloud instance that I'm getting back, but it represents all of the link local clouds on my machine. So if I had multiple network adapters all connected, this would actually represent each of the link local clouds across all those adapters. So we'll just stick with get available clouds for right now. And we'll just do a real simple list of the clouds that are on uh, my machine or available to my machine. And so we'll just put out their name, just do something like that. So pretty straightforward. And then what we'll do is let's just add another quick right line for some spacing. And then we're going to go ahead and get started registering a peer name by asking to enter the peer name classifier. And what we're going to do in this example is we're just going to make all of our peers um, unsecure peers. So we'll just say, okay, I want to get a classifier, and that's going to be equal to a read line here. So we'll grab that. And then what we're going to do is create a peer name that we would like to register. So we'll call that peer name. And this class takes in the name of the peer name and the type of peer name you'd like to register. So we'll pass in the classifier. And in this case, what we'll do is we will say we would like an unsecure peer name. Not a secure one, a unsecure. Just a little easier and allows us to kind of integrate in some of the net uh, network services shell stuff uh, that we had done in the earlier screencast into some of our examples here as we move along. So I'm going to go in and now actually register that peer name. So to do that, I need to get an instance of the peer name registration class. So we'll just call that instance registration. And we'll go ahead and create it. And what we need to pass into this, there's a couple different uh, overloads here that we can use, but the one we're going to use it takes in the peer name that we want to register, a port, and then if I wanted I could add a specific cloud or clouds that I would like to register to. So if I want to go to the global cloud, I could put cloud.global here, for example. This signature basically says register me in all of the available clouds, and that's what we'll do uh, for this example. So now what we'll do is show you a couple of the things that we can do with this registration that also come in handy. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to create, we'll call it timestamp, it's, it's actually a formatted string that contains a timestamp, and we'll say we want to format up a string, and what we're going to say is peer created at and then what we'll do is just pass in a timestamp uh, using a short time string just like that so this is little string says hey this is when the peer was created and what I can do is I can take my registration and actually add a comment to it which is just a string I, I there there is a limit to the size of this I want to say it's 250 characters off the top of my head but I could be wrong about that I may be confusing that with the peer name overall but there there I think there is a limit size there uh, that you have to worry about but then what's even more interesting is if I come down here and let's just do this right now we'll say registration dot data I can actually attach a byte array to my registration as well. This I'm pretty sure is limited to 4K, 3 or 4K in size, and we'll just set this equal to um, data here um, in our uh, our application. Now what's data going to be in our case? Well what we'll do is we'll grab that Unicode encoding uh, class and create an instance of that, just like this, and what we'll do is create a byte array called data, and we'll grab our encoder here and we'll just say um, we want to get bytes, and what we'll do is just pass in the timestamp. And we want to turn that string into an array of bytes, and then we can just assign that to the data. So that's pretty cool. We've got that all set up, some additional metadata, as it were, attached to our peer name. So let's go ahead and just set up a try catch block here. 
Um, there's actually a couple different um, exceptions that can get returned um, by the registration method. One of them is um, you know that you pass in a null peer name. We're not going to do that. And the other one is if you've actually told the uh, registration object itself to be disposed of, and then you try and use it again, it'll throw uh, an object disposed um, exception or something like that. But if something's wrong with the peer-to-peer -peer environment, uh, it will throw a peer-to-peer -peer exception for me. So we'll just go in here and say console write line, and we'll just you know do something like hey, there was a peer you know peer-to-peer -peer exception. And um, you know, here's what the message was, and you can we can read that. That obviously will not happen in our case here, but now we're inside this try block and we want to register. All you have to do is say registration start, and this will go ahead and register everything for me. And as long as this process runs, that registration will be there and available for me uh, to to have you know plugged into whatever cloud that I've registered. So we'll just put out a nice little hey peer registration successful. All right, that looks good. And how about we get a little data off of that peer name uh, that we've registered. So let's write out another right line. We'll say, hey, your peer host name. So we looked at that in the last uh, screencast as well, how we can grab kind of a, DN a faux DNS name. And we'll go in the peer name and say, what's hey, what's my peer host name? We'll grab that. And because we don't want um, the console to close for a couple reasons. One, it makes for a bad demo. Um, and two, if the process that registered uh, my peer name closes, then my peer name goes away. So we'll put in, you know, press enter to exit. We'll hold the window open with a read line statement here. And then just to be a good citizen, when I do exit, I'll actually explicitly call the stop command. Now you'll notice there's some other properties on here. Obviously the peer name I've registered, the port that my registration exists on. I'm um, using auto endpoint selection if I don't, you know, if I don't want to specify which particular endpoint adapter or something like that that I want to uh, connect to. I can change my um, comment and my data payload by calling the update method. Um, I can check is registered to see if I've actually started the registration. Um, I can get an endpoint collection, etc. So some good stuff here that I can, you know, that I can use um, if I want. So we'll just go ahead and say stop. And we're pretty much ready to rock and roll now on this particular little application. So I'm going to do a quick build. Looks good. Let's go ahead and fire this up now. So we'll start a new instance. So it says, hey, what's my peer name classifier? Let's just go with how about um, Jeff. And we'll fire that up. Says it's successful. So let's just pop open another command prompt here real quickly. And let's go ahead and first let's try and ping jeff.pnrp.net. Hey, looks good. That's working. Always got to like that. Let's jump into my network services shell real quickly. Uh, P2P, PNRP, peer, and let's do a resolve on zero because it's unclassified or unsecure. Um, Zero.jeff. And we will start the resolve. And there you have it. We get our resolve back. There's my comment, peer created at 1058. You can see my extended payload in an array of bytes is listed out there. There's my link local cloud registration, and there is my global registration. So very cool. We've now registered a peer-to-peer -peer name, we've pinged it, and we've gone ahead and looked it up from our network services shell. In the next segment, we'll go ahead and take a look at actually using the command prompt to resolve peer names as well.